Hi, and welcome to the next section in our chapter on first order optimization methods. So here we'll talk about um, um, problems that occur with respect to gradient descent, uh, if we encounter very multimodal problems, um, especially if we encounter saddle points. So saddle points are actually a major problem in neural network error landscapes. So usually the problems are not um, arbitrarily bad local minima, although one might think so, it's usually um, usually local minima are already of a good quality in many neural network error landscapes, but saddle points can really either slow down gradient descent a lot or we can get completely stuck in them. So usually we need an extra mechanism in gradient descent to escape these saddle points and we'll um, exactly look at that when we later discuss momentum and uh, more advanced algorithms like Adam and so on. But for now, let's look at um, yeah, the problems. Um, let's dive right into this. So um, this is how a multimodal function would look like. That's kind of the definition of a multimodal function. It yeah, well, has multiple modes. So in our case, if we are minimizing, it has multiple uh, local minima. And um, this can also occur if you look in, um, into deep learning error landscapes. Uh, so many of the simpler machine learning models um, uh, sometimes have ensured convex or a unimodal error landscape. So support vector machines are constructed exactly um, uh, around that property. But for deep learning in particular, in particular it can really look like this guy here uh, and then we can get um, uh, stuck in all of these uh, uh, local minima. Um, and um, um, yeah, um, visual visualization like this here on the left hand side might indicate that um, there could be a global minimum, which is much, much, much better than a, a local one. And in general, this could be true for arbitrary functions. We might optimize whether that is a realistic scenario and really the problem in, in deep learning we'll discuss at the end of this section here. So um, why is that a problem now? Well, I hope that's kind of obvious. So. Gradient descent, of course, only makes local, locally optimal moves. Yeah? So it uh, moves into the direction of steepest descent. We have discussed this now um, at length before. Um, so what could happen um, if we start at a point here and local information actually points us towards this direction? Well, then um, obviously we can move away uh, from this interesting area here where potentially the global minimum resides and we might um, yeah, converge um, to this plateau here. So, and that of course depends on um, the um, exact location of our initialization points um, in higher dimensions. Gradient descent may actually somehow move around this uh, thing here, uh, if that's possible. Um, this will usually come at the uh, cost of a longer trajectory and more, more time for convergence, but at the very least, we would still converge to the right area. Uh, but um, this will not always work. Um, we'll look at an example in a few seconds. And of course, also, I guess, obviously, um, if we only care about our objective value, then and not the exact position of our, um, um, of our convergence point in X space, then only local minima with a high value compared to the global minimum are problematic. So, um, this guy here is obviously not so great. So if you would uh, start from here, we might converge to this guy. Yeah, and this is obviously much worse than these two guys here. Ideally, we would uh, like to reach the global minimum here. So if you look very, very closely at this plot, you should see that this is, uh, I don't know, I guess uh, maybe one millimeter um, below this guy. Yeah, But if we would converge from here or maybe from here to this guy, this would be that bad. Yeah? This is quite obvious. Um, Here's an example um, on another test function. So this is the so-called Eckley function. And um, we have run a couple of um, uh, traces of gradient descent, um, starting from uh, uh, different points. And you can see here for the uh, uh, different traces yeah, that we either converge uh, to such a local minimum here, to a guy here, to a guy here, also depending on step size, you might overshoot. Uh, so this is the, the green trajectory where you can see the zigzagging or oscillating behavior here. So zigzagging now in Y space, not in X space. And you can see that, well, it's kind of obvious, right? That some of these um, 
local minima um, um, are much worse than others. Uh, and this can lead, of course, to huge differences in the reached objective value. Um, very interesting are saddle points. So here is one that we have uh, created through a quadratic form. So you can see this quadratic form here. Um, well, I guess we should maybe start here. So this is uh, simply x1 squared minus x2 squared. Uh, here you can see the gradient and here you can see the Hessian matrix and you can immediately see the eigenspectrum of that Hessian matrix. So apparently this has an eigenvalue of two and an eigenvalue of minus two. So this is an uh, indefinite Hessian matrix. So locally, and in this case, because the quadratic form also globally, the function is uh, not convex, also not concav, it's um, indefinite, yeah, which will result in a, a geometric shape like this here. And it really now looks like a, a horse's saddle. This is why we call this a saddle point. Um, um, and maybe to, to explain this a bit more in terms of the eigenspectrum. Yeah? So if you go along um, the direction of x1, yeah? so if you look into this direction here, you would see that the function curves upwards. Yeah? So just that slice function here, if you move along x1, this is convex. Yeah? If you move along this direction, and I have a much harder time drawing that now, the function looks concave. Yeah? So the function would actually be sloped downwards. Now, um, how do saddle points impair optimization? So for this example, yeah, we can actually uh, uh, run gradient descent. This is um, what we will do. So we'll maybe start from this point here. And then you can see that after a few steps of gradient descent, we can still get stuck uh, in, the, in the saddle point. So the gradient uh, is at, the, um, at the saddle point is still zero. So we can get completely stuck in it and converge to that saddle point and never reach that. What can also happen in other instances is that we can potentially escape the saddle point, but we will have a very, very slow crawling behavior. So we kind of uh, crawl around the saddle point here. And then maybe if we are lucky and we're not converging exactly to the stationary point here right in the middle, we can maybe get out of this. Um, and this also kind of gives us an idea how we can later on maybe change gradient descent. So the idea is to kind of um, move not exactly along these directions of steepest descent and then converge to the stationary point of gradient zero, but kind of move left or right to it yeah? um, to escape this. But um, sometimes, um, yeah, um, maybe also due to, I don't know, numerical inaccuracies um, and, and step size control, yeah, we might not directly converge to it, but we will have very, very slow uh, crawling behavior around the saddle point before we hopefully potentially escape it. Um, so, um, yeah, here is um, not much more to see on this slide. You can uh, also, well, well, uh, there is something to see here. So you can see, um, you can take a look at the gradient norm and you can see how this gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until, um, yeah, we converge to the saddle point where, of course, the gradient norm is zero and then the, um, yeah, the gradient norm is exactly then zero if, if the gradient becomes zero, a zero point, a stationary point itself. Um, so unfortunately, first order information is looking for stationary points with a zero gradient. Yeah, so this is kind of what we are looking for. So um, our gradient descent algorithm can't really differentiate uh, between a local minimum and a saddle point if it just kind of yeah, looks for these stationary points. Um, if we now uh, focus our attention more on the error landscapes of neural networks, um, we can kind of try to figure out what the, uh, I don't know, expected ratio is um, between the number of saddle points and um, the number of uh, local minima. And this is not a simple analysis, so I will only summarize this here. There's an interesting uh, paper by Dauphin, which we are referencing on the next slide. Um, so if you're interested in the details, have a look at that paper. I cannot reproduce the complete analysis here, but I'll give you the summary of the results. So what we um, can figure out from that analysis is that the expected ratio of uh, number of saddle points compared to local minima actually grows exponentially with the um, number M of parameters that our neural network has, which means there are a lot more saddle points than local minima typically in a neural network. So this should already tell us and warn us that local minima are usually not the problem, but saddle points are. Uh -huh. 
Um, we can also try to understand that a little bit better by kind of looking at the Hessian matrix um, and um, and looking at, at potential configurations, so to speak, of Hessian matrices we could encounter um, in such a landscape. Um, so if we are at local minimum, then the Hessian matrix must have only positive eigenvalues. Yeah? So it must be locally convex. At a saddle point, it's a mixture of positive and negative eigenvalues. So now imagine you would create Hessian matrices by coin flipping. Yeah? So for every eigenvalue, for every dimension of the inputs, yeah, for every one of these M dimensions, you're going to flip a coin. So um, I don't know, heads might mean positive eigenvalue, tails might mean um, negative eigenvalue. So um, if you now um, yeah, generate such a Hessian matrix through such a coin flipping operation, yeah, if you kind of generate these these, I don't know, random Hessian matrices, it's much, 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 much more likely that you will um, observe a mixture of these positive and these negative eigenvalues instead of getting a purely uh, convex uh, or strictly convex uh, Hessian matrix with uh, only positive eigenvalues, which would be um, locally convex. Huh? Um, and that kind of um, yeah, leads to this property here um, that uh, yeah, they are much, much more likely in these error landscapes. And there's also this uh, a quote here from the Dauphin paper, saddle points are surrounded by high error plateaus that can dramatically slow down learning. That's um, these um, also this slow crawling behavior around the saddle points and give the illusionary impression of the existence of local minima. While if we reach a local minimum in um, an error landscape of a neural network, usually the local minimum, although it might not be uh, globally optimal, usually has a good value. So um, this is also a reason why in neural networks we kind of, al although um, uh, the function is quite multimodal, we usually do not do too many restarts or restarts at all of gradient descent and uh, are okay with converging into a local minimum. We are not okay with getting stuck in a saddle point.